The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Shirtigal. Upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah, oh, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books or cease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here for evermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, "'tis some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. "'This it is, and nothing more. "'Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. "'Sir,' said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. "'But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, "'and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, "'that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming, dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence wasn't broken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was whispered word Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon I heard again a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is someone at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what they're at is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, wind with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not an instant stopped or stayed he, but with mine of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Tis this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, Art sure no craven, ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, Wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is On the night's plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Much I marvel this ungainly fowl To hear discourse so plainly thought, Its answer little meaning, Little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing That no living human being Ever yet was blessed with seeing Bird above his chamber door bird or beast upon the sculpted bust upon his chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness, broken by reply, so aptly spoken. Doubtless, said I, what it utters is only shock in store, caught from some unhappy master, whom unmercifully disaster followed, fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore, of never, nevermore. But the raven, still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling, straight I wheel the cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, from this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking, nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressed. 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?